everyone welcome back to my channel so one of you guys requested this video and I know how hepatitis B life cycle can be a little confusing you can start DNA then RNA in the middle then DNA again so I'm gonna give you a simple way to think about it and hopefully by the end of this video things get clear for you so what I need you to think about with regard to viruses in general is that any virus has the ultimate goal of producing copycat progeny which means that regardless of what happens in the middle a mother virus has to produce a copycat daughter all right so that's how I want you to think about it so if we start out partially double-stranded DNA which is the genome of hepatitis B we should end up partially double-stranded DNA. We start out with a certain capsid protein, we end up a certain capsid protein. It all has to be an exact copy. However, for that to happen, in order to produce capsid proteins, transcription has to occur. And a partially double-stranded DNA like that of hepatitis B cannot undergo transcription like that. It needs to be repaired first into a fully double-stranded DNA. And that happens by the viral DNA polymerase. All right. So that's the first step to produce um, a, a genetic proper genetic component that can be transcribed into RNA. So now that we have a fully double-stranded DNA, now we are capable of transcription using cellular machinery into RNA. And it is this RNA that we will use to make capsid proteins by translation using cellular ribosomes. And it is this RNA that we'll also use to make the viral genome of the progeny, which is partially double-stranded DNA, through reverse transcription. So in the end, I want you to think this way about hepatitis B life cycle. We start out with a mother virus entering the cell and its goal is to produce a copycat daughter of the exact same structure, both the genome and capsid protein. And so the virus, the hepatitis B, is enveloped, it has a capsid protein, and it has a partially double-stranded DNA genome. And we want to end up the same way. Now, as it fuses with the cell, it's going to leave the envelope outside, and here you have the capsid protein, and here is the genome, partially double-stranded DNA. Now, this virus wants to produce a capsid protein. It will not be able to transcribe into RNA and further translate into protein when it's partially double-stranded, which means it has to be repaired into a fully double-stranded DNA for transcription to happen. This repair takes place by the reverse transcriptase or DNA polymerase of hepatitis B itself. After we've reached the stage of a fully double-stranded DNA, then we can transcribe into an RNA. And this transcription happens by cellular machinery and the human enzymes. This RNA is really all the virus wants. Through this RNA and its translation by cellular ribosomes, we will be able to make capsid proteins for the virus. And through this RNA as well, uh, we will be able to make the partially double-stranded DNA of the virus by reverse transcription. So this is RNA that has been reverse transcripted into partially double-stranded DNA. You can see here that the progeny we've just produced is the exact same as the virus that has entered. It only misses one thing, which is the envelope that it would acquire as it buds off into the endoplasmic reticulum. The envelope of the virus is a phospholipid bilayer, much like the host membrane. And so in the end, hepatitis B has actually achieved its goal of reaching a progeny that is a copycat of its mother. 
Regardless of whatever happens to the genetic material in the middle, it reached the stage where the partially double-stranded DNA is the same as that of the mother cell, right? Or, uh, I'm sorry, it's not a cell, the virus. But one note I want you to take care of in the end is who does each step? So you gotta know that the viral reverse transcriptase, we always say hepatitis B has a reverse transcriptase. This reverse transcriptase has a double function. It has a DNA dependent DNA polymerase activity. What does that mean? It means that if we start out DNA, we can make DNA as well. We start out partially double-stranded DNA, and through this enzyme, we end up with fully double-stranded DNA. Hence, it is DNA-dependent DNA polymers, as it makes DNA. And this same viral reverse transcriptase also has another activity that is RNA-dependent. So in the end, it makes DNA. It makes DNA out of DNA, or it makes DNA out of RNA. How would it make DNA out of RNA? That's when we end up with um, RNA, like the, the RNA that is transcribed in the cell, and we want to produce partially double-stranded DNA that will also be through this same enzyme. So this enzyme makes DNA in the end, whether out of DNA or out of RNA. And that's what we mean by saying that viral reverse transcriptase has DNA-dependent DNA polymerase as well as RNA-dependent DNA polymerase. So I hope that makes things easier for you guys.